Working the night shift at Target was usually uneventful for Emily. As a cashier, she scanned groceries and exchanged pleasantries with customers, her mind often wandering to the mundane tasks awaiting her at home. However, one fateful evening, everything changed. Amidst the routine beeping of the checkout scanners, Emily's heart skipped a beat when she spotted a familiar face in the crowd. It was Jake, her ex-boyfriend from high school, someone she hadn't seen in years. Memories of their tumultuous relationship flooded back, along with the pain of their bitter breakup. Jake approached her lane with a sheepish smile, his eyes filled with a glimmer of recognition. Hey, Emily, he said, his voice tinged with nostalgia. Long time no see. For Emily, seeing Jake again was like reopening an old wound. Despite her polite demeanor, she couldn't shake the unease gnawing at her gut. She hurriedly scanned his items, avoiding eye contact as much as possible, praying for the encounter to end. As Jake paid for his purchases, he slipped a crumpled piece of paper into Emily's hand. I know it's been a while, but I'd love to catch up sometime, he said, his gaze pleading. Here's my number. Give me a call. Emily's heart sank as she unfolded the paper, revealing Jake's phone number scrawled in messy handwriting. She forced a smile, nodding in response, but inwardly, she recoiled at the thought of reconnecting with him. Throughout the rest of her shift, Emily couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every corner she turned, Jake seemed to materialize, his presence looming like a dark cloud over her. She dismissed it as paranoia, chalking it up to the stress of seeing her ex again after so long. As the night wore on, Emily's nerves reached a breaking point. With each passing hour, Jake's persistent presence became more unnerving. She caught glimpses of him wandering aimlessly around the store his eyes fixed on her like a predator stalking its prey. When her shift finally came to an end, Emily breathed a sigh of relief, eager to escape Jake's unsettling presence. She hastily gathered her belongings, making a beeline for the exit. But as she stepped outside, she froze in terror. There, waiting for her by the employee parking lot, stood Jake, his figure bathed in the glow of the streetlights. His eyes bore into hers with an intensity that sent shivers down her spine. Emily! Wait! He called out, his voice echoing in the empty parking lot. Panic surged through Emily's veins as she realized she was alone with Jake, far from the safety of the store. Without a second thought, she turned on her heel and sprinted towards her car, her heart pounding in her chest. As she fumbled with her keys... Emily could hear Jake's footsteps closing in behind her, his voice growing louder with each passing second. With trembling hands, she finally managed to unlock the door and fling herself inside, slamming it shut behind her. Ignoring Jake's frantic shouts, Emily started the engine and peeled out of the parking lot, her tires screeching against the pavement. Tears streamed down her face as she drove, the events of the night replaying in her mind like a nightmare she couldn't escape. In the rearview mirror, Emily caught a glimpse of Jake standing alone in the darkness, his figure fading into the distance as she sped away. Though she was safe for now, she couldn't shake the chilling feeling that she had narrowly escaped a fate far worse than she could have imagined. Working at Target had always been mundane for me. The repetitive tasks the monotonous routines. It was all part of the job, but there was something eerie about our store manager, Mr. Harris. He had a way of making everyone uncomfortable with his icy demeanor and piercing gaze. Rumors circulated among the employees, whispers of strange occurrences happening behind closed doors. One night, while working the graveyard shift, I found myself alone in the stockroom. Mr. Harris had emphasized countless times that no one was to enter his office without his presence. But curiosity got the best of me. The air hung heavy with tension as I pushed open the door to his office. My heart raced as I scanned the dimly lit room. My eyes fell upon a sinister looking mask and a blood-stained object resting on his desk. Panic surged through me, but before I could react I heard the creak of the door behind me. 
Mr. Harris stood in the doorway, his eyes ablaze with fury. Fear gripped me as Mr. Harris locked the door behind him, trapping us in his office. I stammered out a feeble excuse, claiming I had entered by mistake. But his cold gaze bore into me, and I knew he saw through my lies. I managed to escape his office that night, but the encounter left me shaken to the core. The following day, I mustered the courage to quit my job and report the incident to the authorities. Weeks passed, and I tried to put the terrifying ordeal behind me. Then, one evening, a former colleague reached out to me with startling news. The police had taken Mr. Harris in for questioning following an anonymous tip. My blood ran cold as I realized the true extent of his sinister secrets. The manager's office, once a symbol of authority, had become a chamber of horrors, and I, a mere pawn in his twisted game, had narrowly escaped his clutches. But as the truth unraveled, I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lurked beneath the surface of our seemingly ordinary workplace. Title, Night Shift Nightmare. Page one. As a night shift employee at Target, I thought my biggest worries would be restocking shelves and dealing with the occasional unruly customer. Little did I know that one fateful night would plunge me into a terrifying ordeal I would never forget. It was a typical evening, the store quiet and dimly lit, with only the soft hum of the overhead lights breaking the silence. I was busy organizing products in the electronics section when suddenly, the piercing wail of the alarm shattered the tranquility. My heart leaped into my throat as I froze, the sound reverberating through the empty aisles like a harbinger of dread. Moments later, the manager's urgent voice crackled over the intercom, instructing all staff to gather at the front of the store. With trembling hands, I abandoned my task and hurried to join my colleagues, my mind racing with fear and uncertainty. What could possibly be happening at this hour? As I reached the front of the store, I found the manager waiting, his expression grave and troubled. We've had a break-in, he announced, his voice tight with tension. Stay calm, but we need to check the premises. There's someone in the back room and they don't belong here. My heart hammered against my ribcage as I followed the manager towards the back of the store, every nerve in my body on high alert. The air grew thick with apprehension as we approached the employee-only area, the manager's flashlight casting long, eerie shadows along the corridor. Suddenly, the manager stopped short, his beam of light illuminating a figure huddled in the shadows. My breath caught in my throat as I glimpsed the intruder, a man, unkempt and wild-eyed, crouched among the storage crates like a cornered animal. His presence sent a chill down my spine, his intent unknown but unmistakably sinister. The manager wasted no time in confronting the intruder, his voice stern and authoritative as he demanded an explanation for the trespass. But the man remained silent, his gaze darting frantically from side to side as if seeking an escape route. With a sense of foreboding, I watched as the manager beckoned for me to approach, his expression grim. We need to call the police he murmured, his voice low and urgent. This isn't right. As we waited for law enforcement to arrive, tension hung thick in the air, each passing moment stretching out like an eternity. The intruder remained stubbornly silent, his eyes burning with an intensity that made my skin crawl. Finally, the flashing lights of a police car illuminated the darkness, relief flooding through me like a tidal wave. Officers streamed into the store, their presence a welcome reassurance in the face of uncertainty. What happened next would haunt me for years to come. As the police apprehended the intruder, they discovered something chilling in his possession, a cache of stolen goods, along with weapons and illicit substances. It was clear that this was no ordinary break-in. The man had sinister intentions far beyond mere theft. As the night drew to a close and the intruder was led away in handcuffs, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered like a shadow in the recesses of my mind. The events of that harrowing night had shattered my sense of security, 
leaving me with a newfound awareness of the dangers that lurked in the darkness. From that moment on, the quiet aisles of Target held a sinister edge, each shift a reminder of the night I came face to face with true terror. And as I locked up the store and stepped out into the cool night air, I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors awaited in the darkness, just beyond the reach of the flickering fluorescent lights. It was just another typical night shift at Target for Lily, a college student who worked part-time to make ends meet. The store was eerily quiet, with only the soft hum of the fluorescent lights and the occasional beep of the checkout scanners breaking the silence. As Lily made her way through the aisles, restocking shelves and tidying up displays, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It was a sensation she had experienced before, but tonight it felt more intense almost suffocating. Suddenly, she noticed something out of the corner of her eye. An elderly man, hunched over and shuffling slowly down one of the aisles. He looked frail and disheveled, with a vacant expression on his face. Lily felt a pang of sympathy for him, wondering if he was lost or confused. As she approached to offer assistance, the old man turned to face her, his eyes empty and hollow. Without warning, he let out a blood-curdling scream, sending shivers down Lily's spine. Frozen in fear, she watched in horror as the man's form began to flicker and fade, like a glitch in reality. In a matter of seconds, he vanished into thin air, leaving behind only an echo of his agonized scream. Lily stood there, trembling and bewildered, trying to make sense of what she had just witnessed. Frantically, she searched the aisle, but there was no sign of the old man. It was as if he had never been there at all. Terrified and alone, Lily made her way to the store's security office, hoping to find answers or at least some comfort from her co-workers. But when she arrived, she was met with an empty room, the monitors dark and the doors locked. Panic rising in her chest, Lily realized that she was truly alone in the vast expanse of the store. Haunted by the memory of the old man's disappearance, Lily hurried to finish her shift, counting down the minutes until she could escape the suffocating silence of the empty store. But as she made her way to the exit, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, that something sinister lurked in the shadows, waiting to claim its next victim. And as she stepped out into the cold night air, she couldn't help but wonder, what other secrets did the darkened aisles of Target hold?